the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from Pastor Jen Cobray. I'm getting down on my knees. Oh, God, help me. <laughs> Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus. It's so good. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, temperance, meekness, the fruit of the Spirit, God. We're so grateful that the joy of the Lord is in your house today. We're thankful, Father, for your word. We have not come to hear from a man. We have not come to hear from a woman. We have not come to hear from anybody except the teacher of the church who is the Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Touch us and heal us and strengthen us and encourage us and guide us and guard us and direct us and motivate us to be all that you would have us to be. And Lord, we'll give you the praise and glory and all the honor. Thank you, Father, for a mighty move of your spirit in our hearts and our lives today. Now, Lord, as you bless us, we're grateful. But Lord, we want you to bless all the churches in the Inland Empire as well as around the planet that are preaching and hearing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ today. They're our brothers and our sisters. Bless our Baptist brothers and Lutherans and Methodist Episcopalian, Charismatics, Pentecostals. Thank you for Calvary Chapels and Harvest and Oak Valley and Oasis and Inland Christian Center, the Assemblies of God, Foursquare Denomination, Lord. We thank you for our Adventist brothers and sisters and Catholic brothers and sisters, Emmanuel Baptist and Trinity and Ecclesia Church, Lord, San Bernardino Temple, Lord. At no time do we think of ourselves as greater than them, but we see ourselves, Lord, as co-laborers, workers together with them in one field, building one kingdom, not a man's, but yours. All praise and all glory goes to you. We're all in agreement with a great big shout. We say amen. Man, you guys are ready to go today, I can tell. Get your Bible, go with me if you will, into Hebrews, the third chapter. We continue line upon line, precept upon precept. Let's talk just for a moment. I want you to listen. I want you to hear me. The title of the message is Daily Activities for a Healthy Christian. We're going to start off with the word of the Lord. You need to hear what I'm saying to you. As a pastor, my job is to get you to a place of being healthy in your walk with Jesus. My job is not just to introduce you to Jesus or tell you how wonderful Jesus is and he is. My job is to get you so strong in Jesus when all hell breaks out against your life, and it will, that you stay strong. You keep going and you're healthy in the things of God. That you keep producing that which God would have you to produce and being what God would have you to be. You keep on keeping on with the things of the Lord. Being a strong, healthy Christian should be the goal of every pastor. And my goal today and every day that I get in this pulpit area is to make sure that you get fed the word of God that makes you strong and healthy in the ways of the Lord So you can be what God has called you to be. God has some promises set before you. Listen to me. There's a personal promised land that God has for you. God wants to take you someplace you have never gone, been someone you have never been, say something you have never said, do something you never could do before in the past. He wants to take you further and faster, better, higher, and stronger than you've ever been in your entire life. There is a vision that God has, a destiny for your purpose while you are on this planet. And it is not just to know Jesus, die, and go to heaven someday and be a mess all the rest of your life. And we can so easily look at life and say people are so successful because they have money or they have prestige or they have power or they're some form of an icon in society. But if they don't know Jesus Christ and operate in the fullness that God has for them, let me say it again. If they don't know Jesus Christ and operate in the fullness that God has for them, one more time, if they don't know Jesus Christ and operate in the fullness that God has for them, then may I say this to you, they will never live fulfilled, significant lives. They may be successful in terms of the world, but they'll never be significant in their call and in what God had for them in their plan. 
You can die and go to heaven and never be anything, never do anything, never accomplish the things that God would have you to accomplish, never to be fulfilled in your life. Yes, you will be a good person. Yes, you'll be a nice person. Yes, but you will die and go to heaven because you're saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But wouldn't it be great that while you're on this planet, you accomplish what God would have you to accomplish? You may not even know what that is, but you are gifted by God in areas which most people don't know have gifts that need to come out and bring those giftings out to develop the body that's all of us together. We need each other desperately. I'm going to read to you in a moment this daily activities that God gave me to give to you today. Simple things that you'll operate in that'll help you to be strong. Before I read to you out of the verses, I just want to share with you what we've been looking at in Hebrews is the children of Israel. As we look at the children of Israel who are coming out of Egypt, God delivers them, takes them into the wilderness, and wants to direct them into the promised land. This is not a Sunday school story. It is not just a little Bible story that has no meaning whatsoever. We learn from the Old Testament Today, this day, on what they did right and what they did wrong so that you and I could do what is right and understand the wrong way of doing things. That's what this is all about. When I read the story about their failure, I'm really reading the story of your future if you do not follow the ways of the Lord. And that's the purpose of us going to the Word of God. Your future will be determined on how well you deal with the issue in your life and the man in your life named Jesus. Whether you do or don't, that's what life is all about. So you can accomplish a lot. You can sing songs. You can be a movie star. You can be a rock star. You can have millions of dollars. You can even die and go to heaven and be miserable while you're here on this planet because you're not taught what God would have you to do to be, remain a strong, healthy Christian. But if you know what to do, you'll do it. If you don't know what to do, you'll do what you think. And oftentimes that's not good enough to sustain you and keep you going on the path that God has for you. So today as I read these verses out of Hebrews, I, before I do, I want to share with you a principle of the Word of God. I want to say it like this to you. There are daily activities that we do to stay healthy. God's given me five of them to give to you. You ought to write them down and make them part of your life. Just like when you go to the dentist, the dentist says you need to floss. You hate it, you don't want to do it, and you never have time to do it. But if you'll make time, when you go back to the dentist, you'll find out that what you did was good. And here you're going to have to make time in your life to do these five simple things that God gave me to give to you. And it starts in Hebrews, the third chapter. But before I do, I want to give you, if I may, daily activities we do to stay healthy. Number one, encourage others and yourself every day. Number one, daily activity. Put it up on the overhead. Encourage others and yourself every day. When do you do this? When do you do this? Every day you need encouragement. Every day the devil doesn't like you. Every day the world is designed to put pressure on you. Every day the news media speaks to you. CNN says one thing. Fox says something else. Man, you don't know who's right, who's wrong. Politicians promise you everything and never accomplish anything. The economy seems like it's falling apart. Who's right, who's wrong? I know who's right. Jesus Christ is right. And the word of God is right. And anything different than that is wrong. And may I say this to you. Every 
every day because every day the world vomits on you. Every day you need to be encouraged. Every day you will be told you can't make it. Every day you will have fear in your life. Every day there will be pressures coming and you need to be encouraged every day that you can do what God has you to do. You can go where God wants you to go. You can feel what God has for you to feel. You can be what God paid the price for you to be. Every day you need to be encouraged. Now let me say this to you. You need to hang around people who will encourage you. Have you ever hung around negative people? They give me the creeps. If you like negative people, I know a few. I'll send them to your house. They've always got a major problem going on. There's always a woe with me. There's always trouble. There's always, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I know how you're going to make it. His name is Jesus. That's how we make it. And we need to be encouraged every day. How many days? Every day. Sometimes you'll get encouraged on Sunday and you won't hear anything or have anybody encourage you till Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. Every day you need to hook up with somebody. Debbie and I encourage each other every day. I mean, we're getting old and things are not like they used to be and, you know, we look different and we act different and the bones don't work like each other. And she says, Papa, you look good. <laughs> Thank you, Mama, you do too. You're hot, girl. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's nothing like it as being encouraged. And you need to be around people. There's nothing more positive than what God says for encouragement. Because God takes you out of the negative and puts you in the positive. Where the negative says you can't, God says you can. Where the negative says you won't, God says you will. Is anybody listening to me? And that was the trouble where the children of Israel that were going into their promised land, God wanted to take them there. If you will, Hebrews 3rd chapter, verse 12, makes it very clear, beware, least you that you fall, uh, any of you of an evil heart of unbelief and departing from a living God. But verse 13 says this, we're not going to depart, but verse 13 says this, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, least that you have be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Deceitfulness means this, some ways contrary to the ways of God is sin. They come in, they look right, they sound right, they feel right, everybody else is doing it, but it's wrong and it ends you into a place where it hardens your heart and keeps you from God. In order for them to enter into their promised land, they needed to be encouraged they could do it. Remember how they sent out the 12 spies? They checked out the whole land that was ahead of them. They came back with a report and said, God said it's the way it was. Hey, it's that way. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's full of milk and honey. Here are the grapes to show you how great they are. And it's our land. God said it was ours. Ten out of the twelve said negative. We can't go. The giants are too big. We'll never make it. There's always somebody that's got an answer that's logical, but it's contrary to the ways of God. It hardened their hearts. They ended up dying in the wilderness instead of taking the land for the things of God, from the things of God that God wanted to bless them with. You and I are the same way. We can listen to the negative all day long. How you can't make it, how you won't make it, how you're, how you're going to feel. You know somebody who tried and failed. Well, I don't care. Fifteen people tried and failed. I've got God. And my Bible says all things are possible to him that believes. I'm more than a conqueror, the Bible says. Here's how to encourage. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm a king's kid. Thank God. I can make it. My Bible says that I can do everything. I can move mountains, problems, trials uh, by faith. The word of the Lord tells me there's a victory ahead of me and a victory shout ahead of me and we need to be encouraged. And because they did not exhort every single day, every day they did not exhort, they fell into a hardening of the relationship with God and they failed and they died off before they ever got to their personal promised land. Is that you? Is that the way you're going to be? Here's a simple thing. 
Find some place and some place where you can get encouragement. The word exhortation up there, exhorts, means to encourage. And we need to be encouraged every single day. Are you listening? We're talking about daily activities we do to stay healthy. Here's number two that God gave me for you. Number two, I love this. You've got to receive life from God every day. Could you say every day? Listen, you can't get it just on Sunday that lasts all week long. It's never been designed that way. Sunday is Sunday. You'll feel good after you leave this place today. But you got to get it Monday. You got to get it Tuesday. You got to get it Wednesday. You're going to have to get the life of God. And you say to yourself, how to do that? I'll explain to you in just a moment. The life of God is an everyday thing. In fact, you'll find the children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness, they started complaining because they were hungry. They said, God, I don't understand this at all. God, I, 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 I don't see how it works. You brought us out here in this wilderness. We're hungry. We're going to starve to death. You might as well have left us in Egypt. There we had onions to eat and we had some grain to eat. You might as well have left us there. They were complaining. They were negative. They were always down and out, never saw. God big enough and then all of a sudden God who has mercy on them does something very unique you know what God does he drops life to them from heaven it's called manna you might call it food but it wasn't food you can't describe it as food the Bible says manna is angel food it's something they took in, it built their life, it encouraged them, it was the perfect nourishment that came from God, and it was every single day. They couldn't pick it up for two days. If they picked it up for two days, it rotted on the second day. The only time they could pick it up for two days was on the Sabbath. God poured it out so that they had it the, the day before so they could pick up for the Sabbath and it would last and not rot through the Sabbath. For 40 years, God poured out this special living uh, upon them that they took in every single day. We've got this mentality. We don't need to get God's life every day. We'll just go to church once in a while. We'll just hear the word once in a while. We'll just go every other week. You know, my kid's soccer game is more important. My kid's baseball little league game is more important. You know, I got to be a good parent. Let me tell you how to be a good parent. Get your kids. There's 3,500 children over there in children's church. When they get turned on to Jesus, listen to me now, they won't want to go to Disneyland. They'll want to go to church. And we ought to be parents that are leading our children to the things of the Lord more than the fun of this world. Uh, is anybody listening to me? You and I need the life of God every single day. Listen to what the word of the Lord had to say. Go with me to Exodus, if you will. In Exodus, the 16th chapter, let's read it together. In Exodus, we'll see this exact same thing. Exodus, the 16th chapter. When you get to Exodus, the 16th chapter, I want you to look at verse 4 with me. In verse 4, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day. Somebody say, every day. Every day. No, somebody say, every day. Every day. Every day they had to go out and get their quota. Now listen to this. That I may test them whether they will walk in my laws or not. Every day you need to be encouraged. Every day you need to get the life from God. You say, Pastor Jim, how do I get that life? How do I get that manna? It's the word of the Lord. Every day you need to simply read your Bible. Whatever happened to the simple setting time apart, reading the Bible for five minutes or ten minutes, reading a verse, reading a chapter, every single day you need to read your Bible. That's where the life of God comes from. In Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter, in verse number three, let me pop it on the overhead for you. Watch this. Here, here we see this in eighth chapter. So he, notice the capital H in the word he, speaking of God. So he humbled you 
allowing you to hunger and fed you with manna, speaking of those children of Israel that are in the wilderness, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone. Next part of that verse, please. But man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Whatever happened to family times when you get together and you just read the word of God to your kids? Whatever happened taking communion with your children? You can do that without being in church. Whatever happened to answering questions as parents with our, with our children? Whatever happened to us just reading our Bible five minutes every day will bring the life of God into your very existence. It's what you need. There's life in his word. Are you following me? Two things we've already learned this morning about what we need to do. Somebody say every day. Every day is number one. We need to encourage others and ourselves. And number two, we need to receive the life of God every day. Here's number three. You need to rehearse who you are. Every day, the world tells you you're a failure. Every day, there's pressures economically. Every day, the world speaks about how you're not going to make it. Every day, something negative comes against you. Every day, you should say who you are. Did you know, hear me now, did you know that your commitment, your vow to God, changed who you are, changed where you're going, changed your family? You have a new spiritual DNA, you are now part of the family of God. Thank God you got out of the dysfunctional family and got into one that is supernatural. The, the natural family is gone, the supernatural. You are now a child of God, born of the Spirit of God. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are more than a conqueror. You are successful in every area. God loves you. God God died for you. The highest price that could ever be paid for any thing on this planet wasn't paid for gold, wasn't paid for silver, wasn't paid for rubies, wasn't paid for diamonds, wasn't paid for pearls. The highest price that could be paid was God himself, and he paid it for you. My goodness sakes alive, don't listen to the negative stuff. You are a child of God, and the rest can fail. A thousand at one side and 10,000 at your right hand, but no weapon will come near you. No plague will come near your house. You're a child of God. And every day, we've got to rehearse what our commitment, our vows to God meant. It meant that we got out of that lousy world. We're in a new world. When I got out of that lousy position, I'm in a new place. Got out of where we used to be. I'm in a new place. Now I got a new life ahead of me. I got out of having no future into a place that I have a future right now. Every day I need to talk about that. Somebody ought to give me a great big amen. Now listen. The word of the Lord makes it very clear in Psalm 61, verse number 8 says this, I will sing praises to your name forever that I may daily perform my vows. You know what that means? I'm speaking out my commitment and who I am to God. Daily, you need to speak out and rehearse who you are to God. Because every day the devil tells you, you know what? You stink and aren't going to make it. Tell him to go to hell where he belongs and you going on with the things of the Lord. Come on, somebody. We're talking about daily activities we do to stay healthy. Number one, encourage others and yourself. How many times? Every day. Listen to this. Number two, receive life from God. When? Every day. That's reading your Bible. Number three, rehearse who you are. When? Every day. Number four, I like this one. Connect with God in prayer. If you don't connect with God in prayer, the world will get you. Here's what happens. When you connect with God in prayer, it's like a pressure cooker left, leave, leaving off all the pressure. It's like the relief valve in a pressure cooker. 
It lets off all the tension, lets off all the stuff. You have the right to cast your cares on him that cares. That's Jesus. He's the only one that cares. And you got to every day, sometimes we only pray once in a while. But I found out that if you pray every day, and I'm not talking about spending hours and hours and hours in prayer. I'm talking about what you seriously pray for, God will seriously get involved in. Let me say it again, because they may have got it, but I'm not sure you did. So I'm going to say, what you seriously pray for, God will seriously get involved in. As long as what you're praying is godly. You're going to go pray some trash. It ain't going to work. Pray for some other man who's already married. Ain't going to work, sister. Go get your own man. Now, I have to say that because we're in San Bernardino. You understand that, you know what I mean? So what you seriously get into prayer about, God, I'm telling you, it so works. Deborah and I found that out. You know, I'm in love with my Debbie. She's in love with me. <laughs> and, and, and I'll tell you something, but sometimes, this is shocking. I know this could be hard for you to believe. She doesn't like me. <laughs> she loves me. She don't like me. You know what I'm talking about, anybody? Anybody honest enough to know what I'm talking about? Huh? I love him, but I don't like him. I, and there's times when I love her, I don't like her. But I want you to know something. When we pray, she loves me and likes me. When we don't pray, she loves me and doesn't like me. Because when we pray, she'll hear me pray like this. God, we're praying together. God, I seriously want to be a good husband. Now, I don't know how to do that, Lord. I'll do the very best I can in Christ Jesus. But Lord, where I fall short, will you make it up? Will you meet her needs? Will you, will you just bless her today? If, I, if I'm short on doing that, God, will you come in and pick up the pieces? Where I make mistakes, will you cover them for me? Because God, I want to be a good husband to that woman that you gave me. She hears that. She cooks good for me. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Hey, listen to this. Listen to this. And then she prays the same thing. God, I mean, we're praying for our kids, praying for her family, praying for her church, praying for you. And then she, she says, Lord, I want to be a good wife. You know, sometimes I'm a little irritable. Sometimes I'm this or that. And help me to be a good wife. And where I fall short, Lord, I want you to help get in there. Tell you what, I like her a lot. I love that woman. What you pray for seriously is what God gets involved in. Now listen to me. If you're serious about losing weight and don't get God involved in something as simple as losing weight, you will not lose weight. Here's what you will lose. I'm going to meddle in your business. Is that okay? Is that all right? Do I meddle in your life a little bit? You will give your, here's what you'll lose. You'll lose your money, lose your time, and lose your taste buds. You say, what are you talking about? You're giving your money to Jenny Craig. Your time to Weight Watchers. I'm going to probably get sued for this. And, um, and your taste buds because you've got to eat that food. And you say, well, Pastor, it works. Here's why it works, because you were serious enough to invest in it, serious enough to get involved in it, serious enough to go talk to somebody about it. When you don't need to do all of that, all you need to do is get serious with God. Every day, if you're wanting to lose weight, every day you hit your knees and say, God, I can't do this. you got to teach me how to say no. Today I'm going to be confronted with a lot of things. People are going to come up, do you want to eat breakfast this morning? Of course I want to eat breakfast this morning. <laughs> what have you got? What have you got is the wrong answer. The answer is no. I don't, even though you're salivating all over your chin. You think that's a mustache, it's not. And what you do is what you seriously get involved in. Here's why I say this. 
Listen to this. The prayers of a righteous man, the fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. If you say, oh God, I just need your help today. Not fervent. Oh God, help me. But I mean, if you get down on it, man, I gotta have this God. You gotta, I'm telling you, you're gonna drop weight like crazy. Help you keep it off. And the whole thing is, I'm using that as an example because it works for your children. It works for your marriage. It works for your business. It works for your future. It works for relationships. It works for everything. What you are fervently involved in, God will absolutely bless you in it. He'll get involved in it. Are you listening to me? And prayer is very important. The psalmist, Psalms 88 verse 9 says, My eyes waste away because of afflictions, God. But Lord, I have called daily upon you and I have stretched out my hands to you. I've called daily in the midst of problems. God, I, I'm calling out to you. How many times do we stop praying? Just a few minutes of, I'm talking about passionate prayer. I'm not talking about throwing up token prayer. Anybody throw up token prayer. We are in systems all the time. We're in traditions all the time. I'm talking about not praying from your mouth, not praying from your mind, but something that comes from deep down inside. When it comes from the purpose of your heart, and the, the, the recesses of your heart, it changes the future. Is anybody listening to me? We're talking about... Approaching life, we're talking about daily activities to stay healthy. Last one for today. You've got to be prepared for problems. How often are you prepared for problems? Every day. Listen to me. Whether they come or don't come, you must be prepared today for when they do come. Because you can't prepare when they come. It's too late. You got them. And it'll take you too long to get rid of them. In other words, I know problems are coming. I know things are not going to work the way I want them to work. I know things are going to happen. But bless God, I'm ready for them. I'm full of faith. I know that God's on my side. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can still go forward. The problem comes. It may knock me back a little bit. But I'm going to fall backwards and get up and go forward. Because I'm ready for the problem. And the problem becomes, listen to this, becomes like water off a duck's back. And that's what it needs to happen. When the problems came to the children of Israel, before they went into the promised land, they belly ached about the problem so much, they kept them in the wilderness, and they weren't prepared for the problem, and therefore, guess what happened? They never got the promised land. If you're prepared for the problem, you will receive the personal promise from God. If you're not prepared for the problems, then you will be destroyed and defeated by the problems. And that's why every day, every day, you've got to prepare. And that's how you do it, by getting to the Word of God. Jesus put it this way in Luke. Just pop it up on the overhead. In Luke, the ninth chapter, he says these words. He said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. We very seldom ever teach the next word. Jesus goes to the cross one time. And rightfully so, because he took on the sins of every man, every woman, every child upon this planet. We all have his sins on him. All we need to do now is receive him. He took on the sins of mankind. But my goodness sakes alive, you have it every day. You have problems, trials, pressures. You're not taking on the sins of mankind. You're taking on your own problems, pressures, and trials. That's what the word cross means. Every day and follow me. Daily, take up his cross. Daily, and follow me. Daily, every day, prepare for problems. If they come, you got it made. If they don't come, hallelujah. Then you just get to shouting. And that's good news. Five things that we've learned today about activities that we ought to do on a daily basis in order for us to stay healthy. Number one, we need to encourage each other and ourselves when? Yeah. Every day. Number two, we need to receive life from God, which is reading the word. How often? Yeah. Every day. Number three, we need to rehearse who we are by our commitment and our vows that we made to God that changed our life. How often do we do it? Yeah. Every day. Number four, we need to commit to God in prayer. How often? Yeah. Every day. And number five, we need to prepare for problems when? Every day. Today, 
My job as a pastor who loves you like crazy, I love you, I love you like crazy, is to see you endure to the end. All through scripture, he that endures to the end, not just who made a one-time little thought, but endures to the end. Endures means, guys, we're learning how to do this. And like I said, knowing you're going to heaven and being a Christian is one thing. Being victorious in your life until you do go to heaven and fulfill the plan of God that has for your life. And this should be very fresh in all of your lives right now. What I'm talking about is a big difference. Because you can be a superstar, an icon, most wealthy, talented, gifted person who knows Jesus but doesn't know how to apply the principles to stay healthy and be robbed from the world early. And that's not the plan of God. And I love you enough to tell you the truth. If God spoke to you today, come on, give the Lord a great big praise. Look at that. Woo! So good, so good, so good. Listen, I want to make sure all of you are all right with God. I only have a few minutes. Listen to me close. You don't get to heaven because you're nice. You don't get to heaven because you say you love God. You don't get to heaven because you go to church. You don't get to heaven because your mom and dad told you you're a Christian. You don't get to heaven because you were christened or baptized as a baby. You get to heaven because you give God all of your heart and all of your life. Please hear me. Jesus said these words, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father except by me. You can't get there your way, my way, or some well-meaning church committee's way. You're going to have to get there his way. His way is found in John, the third chapter. Jesus said you must be born again. Your good works won't get you there. Your nice smile won't get you there. It will not get you there if you're just a person that fits into society or the social system. You must be born again. Most people don't know what that means. Here's what it means from the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible. Can I tell you what born again means? It means you've given God all of your heart. You've given God all of your life. It is an all or nothing relationship with Jesus Christ. I'll prove it to you. Last book in the Bible, Jesus is speaking. He said, I'm coming again. I don't know when he's coming, but I, I know he's coming. Someday that eastern sky is going to split. and He's coming for you and me. I want you ready. I don't know if it's pre, mid, or post rapture. I want you ready rapture. That's my job is to get you ready whenever it happens. But I know he's coming and you know he's coming. He says, and when I come, I better find you hot. This is Jesus' words, are cold. Because if I find you lukewarm, I'll vomit you from my mouth. Do you know what he just said? Lukewarm people who call themselves Christians are not real Christians at all and are going to get vomited from the mouth of Jesus. That is shocking. What's lukewarm? Little in, little out. What's lukewarm? Little up, little down. What's lukewarm? Token prayer, occasional church attendance. What's lukewarm? God is something in your life, but he's not everything. And until you make him everything, because no one else can, you must make him everything. He'll never be something. So you can't mess with God. Today, someone loves you enough, respects you enough to tell you the truth. You've got to give God all of your heart. He won't steal it from you. He's not a thief. He's not a conniver, a manipulator to make you do it. He's not somebody that will come along and hit you in the head with a two by four. He's not making robots. He wants your free will choice to give him all of your heart Give him all of your life. Being born again, headed for heaven, and denying your presence in hell. I already know you know who he is, or you wouldn't be here. I already know you celebrate Christmas and Easter. I already know you don't have a problem with Jesus. But that won't get you into heaven. It's not what you have in your head. It's what you've done with your heart. Have you given him all of your heart? Have you given him all of your life? Today is your day of salvation. Uh, you say, Pastor Jim, how do I do that? Let's do it God's way. Is that okay instead of my way or your way? Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. But if you deny me, I'll deny you.
That's what Jesus said. If you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. But if you deny me, I'll deny you. In a moment, I'll count to three. I'll go like this. One, two, three. And I'll pop my hands together. Bang! When you hear that sound, bang! Your hand goes up all over this place. Family rooms, I'm talking to you. Wherever you're at, foyer, down at the Love Rock Cafe, if you're online right now, I'm talking to you. God's watching. And when you hear my sound of my hands popping together, bang, your hand goes up. And what you're saying by the raising of your hand is I don't want Jesus in my head like most Americans. I want to give him all of my heart, give him all of my life, be born again, headed for heaven, and denying my presence in hell. Boy, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. You say, Pastor, if you want me to raise my hand, I don't know if I can do that. I'll be embarrassed. Uh Uh-huh, you might be. Get over it. It's better to be embarrassed in a safe place like this for a moment than to be in hell forever and ever because you care more about what people think instead of what God sees. Today, it's your day of salvation. Who should raise your hand if you've been running from God instead of to God? You know who you are. I'm speaking to you. If you've never really given him all of your heart, I'm speaking to you, get ready. If you've never given him all of your life, you're still holding on to it, doing your own thing, I'm speaking to you. If you're one of those people that are in here and you're saying, I'm not sure sure if I've ever really done that, then make sure. I don't care if you've prayed with Billy Graham, I don't care if you've prayed at Harvest Crusade, did you follow up with that prayer with all of your heart and life? Because that prayer won't get you to heaven. God watches your heart and follows your life, watches your life that follows your heart. He's not stupid and he's not a fool. You need to know that. So today is your day. Some of you need to make a recommitment. Here it is. I'm counting. Here it is. One, two, three. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thank you. Thirteen, fourteen. Thank you. Back on this side. Everybody else. There's fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Thank you. Back over here. There's twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Thank you. Back over here. Twenty-four, twenty-five. Thank you. Twenty-six. Thank you. Anybody else? Twenty-seven. Thank you. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else? There's 27. Where are you? There's 28. Thank you. There's 29. Thank you. Where are where, There's another one back in here somewhere. Oh, 29, 30, 31 right in front of me. Good. 31, 32, 33. Thank you. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? There's 33 wise people. So what do you say? Let's give the Lord a great big praise for 33 wise people. Here's what I want you to do. All 33 of you and anybody that should have raised their hand but you didn't and you know it. Stop messing with God and give him all of your heart and life. I want you to get a hold of your coat, purse, sweater, Bible, friend. Get your stuff, all 33 of you and anybody that should have raised their hand but didn't. Get your stuff. Get a friend if you need a friend. Get in the aisle. Meet me in front. No one leave during this period of time. I'll let you go in just a moment. Let's get the people up in front. All of you that raised your hand from the family rooms, you come right now. Hurry, because it takes longer for you to come. You come right now. From the foyer, tell the usher. You just come out of the foyers right now. Come now. Come, 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 come. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. Come on, come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. And I live for you alone, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Come on home, come on home. Anybody else? Come now, come, come, come. All right, well, thank God, thank God, thank God. Where's my Pastor Dave? Where's Pastor Dave? Pastor Dave, where's Pastor Dave? Where's Pastor Dave? Where? Everybody, oh, Pastor Dave, get over here. This Pastor Dave, he's a really good guy. All of you look to your left to see him. He's going to do three things. He's going to pray with you give you some free information after you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The information will tell you what to do next now that you're a Christian. Kind of cool, huh? And then he's going to introduce you to a program we have called Spiritual Personal Trainers. Spiritual Personal Trainers will meet you on a weekly basis, pray for you, and encourage you. You need to be encouraged. You don't need to go back in the pit of depression. You need to go on with God. We'll encourage you. He'll help you and explain what it means. You're going to give God all of your heart, give God all of your life, then do it. Do it. Remember, it's your vow and your commitment that changes your future. So just follow Pastor Dave right over there, and let's give the Lord a great big praise. 
Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give the Lord a great big praise. 